Israel's normalization of ties with the United Arab Emirates has been described in some media as a peace treaty, although the two nations were never at war, and it isn't clear if the agreement has that status. But new reports citing Israeli officials say the agreement, when it is signed, in what many expect to be a White House ceremony in the coming weeks, will have the status of an official peace treaty on par with those signed with Egypt and Jordan. Well, for Israel, the significance of that on both symbolic and practical levels is certainly clear. But what about for the UAE? Well, joining us now for that and other topics related to this agreement, we're joined by Luai Al-Sharif, a linguist and social media activist well-known, joining us from Bahrain. And Luai, thanks for joining us. Well, let me start by asking you that. I mean, uh, obviously, for Israel, they want it to be seen as a peace agreement. I can't even describe how, how important it's seen here. What about in the UAE? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Caleb, for, the, uh, for hosting me. And I would like to mention that I really love your name because <laughs> it's you. a very biblical name. And it's, uh, I'm very attached to the biblical Caleb, you know, the, the, the co-friend of Joshua. Correct. So, <laughs> yeah, when they conquered the land of Canaan, he was one of the spies. And he's praising the Quran, whether you believe it or not. So not so many people know that. So I love the name. As for the peace agreement with UAE and Israel, it's very genuine, Caleb. If you go to Twitter by yourself, you will see how the Emiratis are praising what Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed did. So Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, he made a very courageous move. Like peace is made by courageous leaders. It's a genuine peace. It's not a fake peace. It's coming from the people, and the people of UAE love it. They look at it at they look at it from this angle that it will uh, make the Middle East more stabilized. It will uh, help build uh, the friendship with the Jewish people because now the awareness is becoming more and more clear to many people that the Jewish people are not foreign colonialists in the land of Israel. They are part of this land. They are part of our region. The Jewish people belong here. They have no else to go. So it's really becoming very obvious, like stating the obvious, that the, the, the existence of the Jewish people in the land of Israel is not only historical, but it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a fact. And uh, we can do many things together for prosperity, security, and peace for the region. Luai, maybe stating the obvious, but still quite remarkable to hear someone stating that in a country that Israel doesn't actually have any relations with that right now. Let me ask you about that. Bahrain, there's some speculation about that. How much is the UAE going to encourage uh, other countries, some of those that have been mentioned, its neighbors, Bahrain, Oman, to probably follow in its path? I believe so many countries will follow suit, but I have to tell you one thing, Caleb. It's not easy. 70 years of uh, uh, propaganda against the state of Israel will not go overnight. But courageous leaders like Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed are doing this. And if you see it from this angle, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and the, and the UAE leaders are actually uh, encouraging others to follow suit because Sheikh Mohammed and the leaders of UAE, they want a stable Middle East. Only those who oppose a stable Middle East do not want this to happen. But those like regular people, people, uh, guys next door like me and you and everyone else, we want to prosper, we want to live, we want to, to, uh, to build better economies, we want to open our startups, we want to invest in technology, infrastructure, agriculture, we want to go to, we want to make our kids go to better schools, and we want to live in a stable Middle East. And, and UAE, what it did, was very encouraging to other countries. But you have to know that, as we say in Arabic, shwaya, shwaya, it will take maybe some time for people to, to comprehend the new reality. People thought that Israel never existed 3,000 right. years ago, for example. So now you have to state the facts to them that, you know what? These people belong to this area, and Israel is a fact. It's recognized by the United Nations. You have to deal with, you have to deal with it. And I don't believe Israel is a threat to, to its neighbors. Right. What is a threat to its neighbor is a country that writes in its constitution to export uh, revolution, to, uh, to, to export its, its sect, 
to uh, to to uh, to force people to believe in what they believe in. Israel doesn't do that. And by the way, Judaism is not a preaching religion, as you, as not so many people know in the Arab right. world. So right. the Jews are not really. Uh, a danger. Uh, they are not posing a danger to their neighbors. Right. I want to pick up on your comment, Loy, about years of propaganda. And of course, look at perhaps the certainly elements in the Arabic media, including in parts of the Gulf. And that's something that you've dealt with. Uh, I want to just point out the Emirati ambassador to the U.S. published a what I would call a watershed opinion piece in an Israeli daily back in June as the Israeli government at that point was gearing up to introduce annexation legislation, and the ambassador warned such moves would put efforts towards normalization in jeopardy. Now, you put up a video at that time on social media in Hebrew talking about how some parts of the Arab media misrepresented or misreported that piece. Let's take a brief listen to that. סופרים אמריקנים שיבחו את המאמצים הללו וראו בהם אזהרה מפני נקטת צעד הסיפוח. אמצעי תקשורת אנטי יהודים וערבים הציגו באופן שגוי את מאמר אל-עוטייבה לגבי מטרתו העיקרית. נאומי הפופוליזם כלפי הסוגיה הפלסטינית, הסכסוך הפלסטיני-ישראלי, מעולם לא לא פתרו את הבעיה וגם לא יפתרו אותה. לכן, איחוד האמירויות הערביות פנו ישירות לרחוב הישראלי. Louis, first of all, let me compliment you on your Hebrew. Really remarkable. But now let me press you a bit. You talk about Arabic media. I want you to get a little more specific. Certainly the, when we think about that, especially in the Gulf area, uh, we do primarily, first of all, think about Al Jazeera and the country that stands behind it, Qatar. So is this uh, what you're referencing? And, and why, do you, why is that? I mean, why do you think they are presenting it that way? That's a very good question. And let me just put it straight. We are not, or at least in this uh, interview, I'm not against the Qatari people. The Qatari people are our relatives, our, our neighbors and everything. But the Qatari-led media is actually uh, what I meant in this video. And they are not posing a good position towards peace. The Qatari-led media, they are actually um, a stumble block. They are blocking the, 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 the chances of having peace with the Jewish people. Their speech in Arabic is totally different from their speech in English. If you watch a uh, uh, Qatari media in Arabic, and if you watch it in English, you would see different speeches. I believe that maybe they were they were a bit jealous. The UAE did this, and it was a remarkable step. And they wanted to say this is a false peace. And of course, what they call a true peace is actually negotiating with uh, militants, and, and and UAE doesn't do that. So I believe the Qatari media is not playing uh, a positive role, Caleb. It's playing a role towards anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish, and they are not telling people the facts that the Jewish people belong to this region and peace with Israel is inevitable. So, so it's going to happen sooner or later, and we have to comprehend this fact. It's not a new fact. It's a fact that Israel exists. It's recognized by, by the United Nations, and so many opportunities were lost in the past but there are some opportunities that still can be fetched. It's really wise to think for peace and for stability of the region. The Qatari media is not doing this. The UAE peace agreement with Israel is very genuine, Khaled. As I told you earlier, if you go to Twitter, have a look at the Emirati Twitter users. They are posting genuine uh, feelings about Israel genuine uh, uh, intentions about uh, visiting uh, the land of Israel. And it's, it's really happening from the people. So we are facing a media that is against stability in the Middle East. To what, to what goal, uh, Luai? That's what I'm asking you. What the Qatari leadership, to what goal are they, uh, uh, as you say, uh, trying to destabilize the region or certainly destabilize certain elements of it, and certainly in this case, the agreement between Israel and the UAE. Obviously, they want to take the leadership. It's very obvious that they play on all sides, and uh, they, they, they want to win everyone, you see? Now, as I tell you, they think that they, they should be leading this kind of, uh, this kind of efforts, 
And now UAE uh, cut it short. I believe if Qataris are there, are, are really willing for, and I'm talking about the Qatari regime, not the Qatari people, if I they understand. are really willing, yeah. willing for a stable Middle East, they have to join efforts for us all to live in peace in this region. There is no reason for destabilizing a region that is already destabilized like the Middle East. Right. What role do you see? For, you are on social media. You have a presence there. A lot of Israelis, that has become their medium for sort of bridging the gap across the Gulf. Even I'm not just talking about the UAE. I'm talking about either other nations, including Qatar, and even those maybe more hostile to Israel. How important do you see that role of social media and the role that people like you are playing in that landscape? Marvelous. Marvelous. It, which, it could change uh, mindsets that were not uh, that 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 a normal media would never change. Communicating with others in their language and communicating back would actually make many false lies go away. It's really important for people to talk together. It's very important for people to learn each other's cultures. You know, I remember that when I was young. I've heard many lies about the Jews and about the Jewish people. And to be very honest, I was influenced. But when I started to travel, especially to France, and when I lived with a Jewish family, everything changed. I was having this inner battle between what I was learned and what I was facing. So this is the importance of talking with each other. Social media bridged that gap and made it very and made it easier for people to know. Uh, more about themselves. And you can know now that Israel is a, a country that is allowing uh, freedom of uh, religion, freedom of uh, 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 pr uh, religious practice. You can see Muslims pray in Aqsa Mosque. It's not like what the media is saying. They will not allow you to pray there. They are against Islam. Israel is not a country. I believe it. It wasn't against Islam. It's not against my religion. And it will never be against my religion. It allows freedom of uh, uh, religions to all people, to Muslims, not Muslim, Yahudi, Mus uh, Muslim, to everyone. And these kind of facts will never uh, be available to the regular audience if social media wasn't there. And believe me, Caleb, I know many Arab Israelis, many Arab Israelis who have the Israeli citizenship. And they are saying to me, Lu'ay, I am so proud to be an Israeli. I am so proud to be an Israeli Muslim. I'm so proud to be an Israeli Christian. I'm so proud to be an Israeli Durzi, and I'm happy with it. I get my full rights. I, uh, my children go to great schools, and I can pray whenever I want. There is nothing like uh, what you hear in the Arab media. And these kind of facts need to be surfaced, surfaced to the regular Arab right. uh, uh, people right. in, in the Middle East. Right. Well, Louis Al-Sharif, I certainly hope that uh, at some future date soon, I want to be able to host you here in the studio. You could demonstrate your, he <laughs> your Hebrew, amaze Israelis with your Hebrew, and we could discuss Kaleb ben Yafune from the Bible, and you'll tell me what the Quran says about him. And I look First forward to First of all, to where is your studio? <laughs> Jaffa, in Tel Aviv. Oh. So uh, we have to go now, Luai, but we look for, I look forward to hosting you here in Jaffa. Luai Sharif in Bahrain, thank you for that. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.